See the fellows? So I've got me this children's plaything right here, tiny beads that grow in water. And an interesting idea occurred to us. Why not use these to make a tire that you can't puncture? They grow quite significantly in size, they can contain a bunch of moisture, and no matter what you do, they retain that moisture. Obviously it's gonna be heavy, but I think we should give it a try. But for starters, let's try conducting a little mini-experiment. I've got a bottle of water right here. I'm going to open this can, pour these in, and just see what happens. Now we put the cap on, and from here it's a matter of waiting to see what happens. After a bit of time, all of these balls have swollen, and they are taking up all of the space inside this bottle, even though I only poured in a tiny bit of them. Obviously, I'm squeezing it and the pressure is not escaping, but here's what I think we should do. I reckon we need to do some damage to it. It's not compressing. We can't crush it, and so there's a good chance we can actually make a punctureless tire. So we're gonna grab a wheel, unseat the tire, pour in a bunch of these beads, add some water into the mix, and wait for a bit and put it to the test. Let's do this. So we have got this wheel for a lot of to which we've added four additional valve stems. The reason we did that, well, we want to place this wheel into some water and allow the water to make its way inside. The beads are going to swell, and this way we won't be restricted in terms of how much water we can put in. And so we've got us some of these. The manufacturer claims that one container holds 50,000 tiny beads. And so this is how many containers we've got overall. After all, we want to try making two wheels to be able to do a wider range of experiments. So if that's 50, 100, that means we're pouring 300,000 of these beads into each wheel. So it all sounds good, but what's actually going to happen? Well, let's find out, shall we? Okay, so we've poured everything in, though we haven't filled these with water all the way, because we want to give the beads a chance to swell. From there we want to be able to submerge them in water and for them not to float. So we wait, add some more water, and uh, place these in water. So a few days have gone by and this is slightly interesting. The balls hadn't swollen that much. So we extracted these, added a bit more water to them, and what we saw today was pretty amazing. The valve stems are capped, but that's all we got on there. These don't contain the actual valves or anything. I can even uh, demonstrate that to you. Right here you'll see... Oh, notice how the gel is trying to escape. The beads are evacuating, see? Yeah, I'd better keep the cap on. Wouldn't want them to escape prematurely. But the interesting thing here is that... I'm barely able to even crush this. So far, things are going very good. The tires have got pressure in them. The only real issue is the weight, because if my memory serves me, we did put about 18 to 20 liters of water into these, which would mean that exact weight gain in kilograms. The beads are swollen, they're packed in there tightly, and so now let's go ahead and fit these to a car and to see how they behave. All right, we're ready. Time to fire up the engine. There we go, excellent. Okay, here we go. Obviously, going this slow, we won't be able to tell what's up. We're barely even moving. But already I can tell that the tires are not chewing themselves up, and uh, that is nice. Going over some bumps with all of these sharp edges and so on. These are some pretty rough roads. And this feels alright.
What if I try going a tad faster? You can really hear things happening going over the sharp edges. So going over these bumps, the gravel, we also got bits of brick on the road, but the car just drives them. Um, I'm not noticing anything that would point towards the wheels containing water instead of air. Though it is a bit unnerving with it wanting to go right. Suspension not taking any hard hits. And we are stopped. So after a bit of driving, uh, nothing has changed. They still appear to be fully inflated, like before. So these tiny beads actually work. Let me try removing this cap. Right, they began to pour out. Yo, stay in there! Let me at least put this back on. Had to remove it. So the caps, uh, yeah, they serve the purpose, um... They prevent the beads from pouring out of the tire. Okay then, you would have seen that they're trying to escape from inside the tire. But the idea was to make a wheel that you can't puncture, and so we've got some sheet. In there we've got... A couple of lovely screws. And they should easily be able to poke through a tire. So I'm going to try driving over this, and we'll see if they start escaping through the resulting holes. Won't know until we try. Okay, so we've got that in place. Time for us to slowly get moving. What just happened? So here's what's up. The screws were a bit too long. What happened is that they were just broken. Shouldn't be a surprise with how long they are. When the wheels roll over it, the first thing that happens is they bend, and after that they simply break off. But let's try something different. Now we've got them slightly angled. And here we go. I was told we have contact, but let's go have a look. Everything is good, both were punctured. But where... I can't hear either of them hissing. Nope, can't hear it. So this is rather interesting. When driving over uh, screws or nails of this sort of length, uh, yeah, the tire did get punctured. But the beads have made it so that, um... So wherever you have loss of pressure, that's the point they go towards. That being said, in this case, they are not escaping. And so we have no loss of pressure, the tire isn't going flat. Let me try driving over the screws once again, just to be sure. And then do a lap to see how the tires are going to behave. Excellent. Hit the screws right on. What's in the tire? The screws have broken off. We'd better remove them. Where are they at? Oh, there they are. But they're sticking out and there's no noise. How does that work? There is some pressure in these, something should be escaping. Either water or air. Okay, let me go ahead and, um... Wow, that went in deep. That's what she said. Now the other one. And this one didn't go in quite as deep. Only by about 20 millimeters. But it did go in, and there is no hissing noises. But now let's go do a bit of driving. I'm going to do a lap to see whether these start losing pressure or these beads actually work. I don't feel any difference so far. It's driving just like it was before. When hitting the edges, oh, it's tracking straight, wow. But then we get to the bumps and it's veering right again. Okay then. 
the behavior of the car has not changed at all. The car is driving and the tires are doing exactly what they're supposed to do. So I just did a relatively short lap, some time has gone by, but the tires have still got some pressure in them. Granted, this one is a bit jiggly if you start doing this, which does tell us that the pressure is insufficient. But they're not crushed, I mean, well, this one does look a tiny bit deflated because it's on top of a stone. But you can easily just continue driving on this without worrying about destroying the tire or damaging the wheel when hitting a bump or something. These water gel beads are a pretty cool thing, aren't they? Now, the final thing I want to do is to take the wheel off, remove the caps, and uh, watch them evacuate. I'm curious to see how many of them are going to escape. Okay, let's do it. Let's try this without even removing the wheel. First we... oh, there we are. They are escaping. They are more than happy to. They are slowly pushing each other out. Yeah, look at that. They're not exactly round, though. As though they are getting slightly deformed on the way out. While going through the stem. Oh, look, it's speeding up. Through one of the stems, at least. They're actually not even that big. When we had them inside the plastic bottle, they became much bigger. They were swelling up much more significantly. So look here, we've been waiting for a really long time, but they're still trying to escape the tire. Especially through the stem that's up here. And now you can tell that the wheel does appear to be deflated. Yeah, it does look slightly deflated. But we've still got a bunch in there, so here's what we'll do. I'm going to put this cap uh, back on. Also, uh, this one. And I'm going to fit this compressed air nozzle to the next valve. And put a bit of air into the tire. <laughs> We've got some kind of uh, bead fireworks going, don't we? <laughs> okay, let's fire this gel bead gun of ours. <laughs> We've still got another wheel, this one was in the back. Yeah, they're escaping this one as well, and these are actually intact. Not anymore, but we're gonna force them out. Okay, well, we have succeeded in making tires that won't go flat. And even after we punctured them on purpose, the beads were keeping the tires pressurized. Obviously, the water won't be squeezed out, there is no air, so there's nothing that could escape. The tire stays under pressure, and uh, yeah, this was a success. Also, we did that little salute in the end, with all of them tiny gel beads raining down on us from above. I thought that was quite a lot of fun. So we are looking at a 107% success rate. And that's it for this video, catch you guys later.